Hi there, my name's Paul Rayner and I'm Communication Officer for two addiction clinics, Smartmore Castle in Ireland and Castle Craig here in the Scottish Borders. This is an edited recording of a webinar we did following on from the Virtual Trauma Recovery Summit in June 2021. Our aim for this webinar was to try and answer as many questions as we could about what we do to treat addiction and trauma at our centres and how we can work with people like you moving forwards to help as many patients as we can. We had people attend from across the UK and Ireland, which was great because we treat patients not only from across the UK and Ireland, but also from further afield with people coming to us from all around the world for addiction treatment when COVID allows. So the ideal place to start, especially when we're talking about the topic of trauma, was with Phil Grant. Phil has worked with us for many years now. He joined Castle Craig in 1998 and he moved over to Ireland just over five years ago to help set up the team at Smarmel Castle over there. So here's Phil to give an overview to addiction with trauma, addiction and trauma to start us off. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Hi there. Uh, I'm Phil. I'm the senior therapist here in Smarmel. Um, as you can hear, I've not got the most Irish accent. Um, I came over from Scotland in 2015, as Paul said. I worked in um, Castle Craig, previously coming over here um, for 18 years. Um, and so how does Smarmore Castle and Castle Craig work with trauma? For myself, um, when I started in Castle Craig, I was very interested in the people who had been brought up in alcoholic homes or dysfunctional environments, inconsistent parenting, um, and that became my really lead into working with trauma. And I ran the ACUA group, Adult Children of Alcoholics, in Castle Craig for about 15 years. Um, and that was a very, very powerful group, very powerful. Um, we were looking at that time at um, when you grow up in a dysfunctional environment, you learn three core messages, and that's don't talk, don't trust, and don't feel. Um, then when we, I was brought up in an alcoholic home, so I had uh, I had a, a personal interest in um, looking into um, trauma and things like that. Um, when I moved on, I started to look at sensory motor psychotherapy, um, and that became my key um, my key aim of working. My key theory was sensory motor psychotherapy, and that's not only looking at uh, complex trauma, but also developmental trauma. Um, and I started doing a lot more of that when I came over to Smarmore Castle, 2015. So um, sensory motor psychotherapy is what I work with. I know in Castle Craig that they work with a lot of EMDR. Um, groups. Um, what we've got here in Smarmore Castle is we've got a beautiful program. We've got a beautiful program. Um, we're one of the only treatment centres in Europe that's also got a, a, the advantages of having a pool. Um, so um, we do um, aqua aerobics. Our patients at the moment um, are around about the pool and they're doing yoga. Um, so a lot of these things that are in place in the programme are really, really important for um, working with traumatic patients, um, patients that have experienced either complex trauma, singular trauma or developmental trauma. And what I'm finding more and more is that 99.9% um, .9 of people are experiencing some kind of developmental trauma. Um, whether that's growing up with inconsistent parenting, as I said, they came in here with mood disorders, anxiety disorders. Um, patients came in here with eating problems, self-harm problems. Um, they've, so first of all, what we do is we, we do a lot of assessments here. Our assessments combine anxiety and that's the, the Hamilton Anxiety Questionnaires. We also do the Beck's Depression Inventory. We do the Rosenberg Self-Esteem self Inventory. 
Um, we do a, a, a trauma inventory, plus we look at alcoholism and drug addiction. So we look at um, a mast and a dast. We also look at a scoff, and that is for eating issues. And we also look at um, sex addiction as well. So we look at all these things first of all and we do a biopsychosocial assessment. So the biopsychosocial assessment is going um, right back into childhood issues, family issues, how our clients get on with um, family members, what their upbringing has been like, how their schooling been. Um, and it gives us a real understanding, a real of what traumas they've, they've got. A, a lot of people don't even know what trauma is. They, they look at and believe that trauma is, uh, which it is, is rape and sexual abuse and things like that, but they don't really recognise the other aspects of trauma. Um, I, I was thinking about a client um, recently um, who had been, um, not that I'm going to talk about any particular client, but um, this was even this morning we were talking about um, people who had been adopted um, and, and how um, that becomes really traumatic um, and their relationships uh, in their life, throughout their entire life, their codependency, their ability to, um, to navigate relationships the relationships that they end up in through their addictions and so many people have um, so much anxiety in childhood and they, they don't even know where the anxiety came from. They would describe their childhood as my childhood was good, all I had was anxiety. So it's like that is a, a, a clear cue that there's something else there. Um, and so one of the things that I do is some of the talks that I do is um, I talk about the window of tolerance um, and I try to explain to my clients what the window of tolerance is and what developmental trauma is. Um, so I, I, some of our clients are really um, got complex traumas so they may have had rape or sexual abuse um, they may have had deaths within their families and they may have also brought up with um, anxiety disorders um, and one of the, the difficulties that, um, and one of the things that we're noticing more is that people who have been put on medication or have been prescribed medication and diagnosed early, early um, life or they've found drugs for cannabis, say for example, they found cannibals and it made them feel better and they started on their road of addiction um, and all their friends were doing it. Um, they found alcohol and it was a disassociation. So they started to disassociate from life in general um, through alcohol, cannabis, different chemicals, even um, to the point of, I believe, uh, everything that we've spoken about in the, the Trauma Summit as well is also talking about um, medical issues that come up as a result of trauma. So we've got a lot of patients that come in here with pain They've got a lot of physical pain. They've got a lot of um, not just emotional difficulties, but they've got a lot of physical difficulties as well. And one of the ways for years, the medical fraternity have been looking at physical pain and things is to prescribe. So there's been a lot of people coming into Smarmore Castle who have got um, complex traumas in, in relation to they've got physical pain issues, they're managing their pain with medication, they're also drinking alcohol, um, they're, um, they've got trauma issues from their childhood um, and to, we start to put a treatment plan together. As soon as our patient walks in, we start to put a treatment plan together and look at aftercare planning as well um, and how we can validate that person while they're here um, and let them know that we are trauma informed. Um, we, we've we got a trauma informed treatment centre or we're heading towards having a trauma informed treatment centre. I think we're more towards having trauma informed practitioners here um, heading towards this um, Smarmore Castle and Castle Craig being trauma informed place. And we have to look at different things in relation to um, I've got one client, or I had one client who um, 
who then a uh, uh, although we've got a pool and it sounds lovely, but what if you've had a, a possible um, trauma from drowning when you were a child? Then we've got to look at all this kind of stuff as well. Um, there, trauma can come from all different angles. It can come from so many different ways. Um, we've got a lot of clients in here who've experienced self-harm, who've experienced suicide or ideation, they've experienced family, especially in Ireland, families who've been brought up in the troubles um, and, and that has became really, um, then their siblings are coming into treatment having um, went to drinking drugs um, to deal with the anxiety of childhood um, and not recognising that multi generational issues of trauma exist. So we start I, I start to to teach my patients about this multi generational issue. I also I use one thing, um, it, it's like you know the fairy tale of the princess and the pea. And I think that's a really good way of describing to clients about these traumas that are locked away deep inside. Um, and I explain that the, they've got all these matrices that they've used, all this disassociation, all these drugs that they've used for years, um, trying to, and they can still feel it. It comes right through all of that. They can still feel it in their bodies. Um, and some of the work that sensory motor psychotherapy does, we don't jump into the big traumas. We teach about emotional regulation. We teach about the developmental traumas. We we talk about the brain and how the brain develops through trauma. We um, and we teach people how to use and how to apply emotional regulation to these developmental traumas. And if they can apply these to the developmental traumas, when the big trauma comes up, they can also apply that to the bigger traumas or, or what I call the actual traumas. Um, and or, uh, I feel that that's really, really important for our clients here. One of the, the uh, Laura spoke about relationships, and relationships to me, one of the, the uh, we always speak about the therapeutic relationship, um, and um, Pat's talking about, um, in relation to person-centered counselling and um, the, the therapeutic relationship being the key um, to the um, the therapeutic relationship our clients that come in here, we sometimes are the only people that ever see them clean and sober. Their families may have never experienced them clean and sober and may never experience them clean and sober after here. Um, and I, th I feel that that's a real privilege, a real privilege to be with these, these people on a day-to-day -day basis and getting to know them. Um, so f um, working with giving them trust, showing them safety, that they can open up. Um, I explain all sorts of things to them. We work with body language. Um, my clients, after a while, they, they begin to really love body language. Um, I, we also do one thing I started in Castle Craig um, in 2003, was working with non-verbal therapies and non-verbal therapies was using uh, drums, African drums, to facilitate drum circles. Um, and this can be absolutely amazing um, when you see people lighting up and laughing and joking and dancing for the first time in life without alcohol and drugs. I get them to sing African songs and things like that and they love all that. Um, I hear them after the drum circle and they're still singing these songs and Phil, that won't leave my mind. So there's a lot of resources that we use here in Smarmore Castle and Castle Craig as well. Personally, I've got diagrams of the brain everywhere. I've got a diagram on my wall. Um, I've got a diagram of the nervous system. I've got, a lot, you can see over there, a little brain. That's probably the size of my brain, as Keith would say. Um, uh, just sitting over there um, and anything that helps our clients to understand what we're saying rather than it just be theory, 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 theory to make it a lived experience for them. I was showing something to Paul earlier on and he was laughing I'm going to show you just now. This is one of the ways that I help clients understand trauma. To explain to them because we are animals, the trauma response 
when we talk about animals in the wild and how the brain works and how the startle response works. Um, and my client, my, my clients have bought me these things. They've bought these things for me. They've bought me the zebra. They've bought me the... Uh, the and I, I really feel that you know, in the relationship, that's really important, really connecting with the client, really connecting with them. Um, we have a laugh, so we do. Uh, I think that's really important as well. It's not all about the tears. Sometimes it's about that just that moment. Um, in Smarmore Castle, we also um, do a lot of mindfulness. Um, we have mindfulness groups. Um, we have mindfulness three, four times a week um, and yoga and we have equine therapy as well. We have um, where our clients work with the, work with horses um, and we've got two donkeys as well and they really got on with them. Some of them say that they feel as though they identify with the donkeys. You know, they feel as if they're, they've been told all their lives that they're stubborn um, and trying to get them to work with these um, animals is just a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, we also do family therapy. Um, our clients, um, families, we refer or we describe to them what the family illness is. We believe that alcoholism is a family illness as well, which is a traumatic experience. Um, to get our clients to understand what families go through, referring back to equine therapy, um, one exercise that, that I've seen done in equine therapy is that the horse becomes the client and the clients become the family. And there's one client with some apples and some sugar and the family's got to try and get the patient into treatment. But there's one person that's holding the, the, the horse back with their apples and their sugar. And it shows you the trauma that families go through and the difficulties that families go through to try and help um, or manipulate or um, to control, enable, and all these kind of things to try and um, work with the addict and the alcoholic. So um, our, uh, I think it's a beautiful experience working with people's trauma. Um, we've also got to recognise as well that um, through this, that us as prof professionals, um, we can take a lot on board ourselves. And I think that's really important. It's Marmore Castle, we work with the staff as well. We have, um, we have group therapy with the staff once a week where we talk about any issues that come up. We have supervision. I think that's really, really important as well. Um, and there's ongoing training. Um, as you can see in my, my back, I've got um, sensory motor psychotherapy, I've got the polyvagal theory, I'm interested in all those kind of things. And my clients become really, really interested in these things. Um, they, when you start to explain to them what trauma is and what developmental trauma is and what multi-generational trauma is and that they can actually do something about it, Way back um, in the, the the early 2000s, um, late 90s, when I started doing ACOA um, and looking at the the development of multi generational issues, where our families, I, I got in a self disclosure. How do you work with self disclosure? I mean, I, I, for me, uh, my father was an alcoholic. I've got no problem in mentioning that at all. Um, I I look at um, multi generational issues. I, at the moment, I'm doing my genealogy, uh, and uh, I, a lot of people from my hometown found out that they were from Ireland. So I'm doing my genealogy, and I'm finding out my grandfather who was alcoholic, and find out my great grandfather. And after, since since the last 80 years, what has happened in relation to alcoholism and drug addiction? You had the Magdalenian sisters, you had all these um, electric shock treatment, you had pre, pre, um, frontal lobotomies and brain surgery and all that kind of stuff. We're moved forward so much, um, but all these things have followed us, all this trauma has followed us for years and generations and generations till we're left with all these things today. 
So a lot of, uh, as um, Gaber Mate talks about it, like, there's uh, so much that we're left with that's not even ours, but we have to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And for our clients to start to really understand what trauma is, and that's what I believe trauma-informed treatment centre is, we also have to look around the whole building. Um, like, we have a smoke hut, which is just outside the window, um, and, and a lot of patients gather there. And we've got to recognise that that can be a traumatic experience for other patients to go out where there's a group of people standing. So we've got to recognise all this. This is a, a, what I believe is about being a trauma-informed practitioner, is to see it, is to recognise it. It's not just the trauma that's in the client, it's the trauma that's there on a day-to-day -day basis that continually comes up. And that's procedural. Um, we speak about procedural learning. Um, the skills and the habits that have been caused throughout life um, and that is the even that don't talk, don't trust, don't feel and our clients come in here today and what we're saying to them is talk, <laughs> trust me, feel your feelings and that's scary for them, all their emotions come up uh, uh, they want to, they go back into that reptilian brain again um, you can see it in their body language, they're ready to run out the door um, and to experience that and be in the here and now with, the cl with my clients to say, You're, there's the door, there's no threat here you can leave any time you want you can walk out that door um, if you need a break, if you need some fresh air if you want to stop the session at any time um, and doing mindfulness sessions with, with my clients as well in the here and now and, um, it's just a beautiful experience um, Thank you Phil <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> I could so, talk about this forever, so I could, I could yeah. talk about this forever. It's, it's just fills me. Uh, and as you can see, I've, um, when I work on, on these calls with with other people, one of the things I love about Smile More and about Castle Craig myself is the passion that's here um, amongst the therapists through lived experience, through the amount of years that they've been helping people and the improvements um, that have come since. Um, I, I'll give you a, a bit of a background and introduction to, to Castle Craig and, and Smile More. And I'll also say hello, hello to Kathleen who joined us while Phil was speaking there. Um, Kathleen, Phil is um, Phil Grant is senior therapist at Smile More Castle Addiction Clinic in in Ireland and he's worked with with, with us and um, so that's Castle Craig and Smarmore Castle um, since 1998 when he worked at Castle Craig here in Scotland and and Castle Craig is a, a hospital was founded uh, 33 years ago now in 1988 by um, Peter and Dr Margaret Ann McCann who wanted to build um, a addiction treatment centre that could help people um, from all backgrounds um, on the 12 step programme with the Minnesota model um, and help people on the road to recovery. And they've built the hospital up room by room here over the years. Um, treating um, patients from all backgrounds and, and all areas around the world. And then Castle, uh, Smallmore Castle was opened in Ireland in 2015. And um, it's still um, a family-led organisation that, that runs these places. There's still the passion of helping others is deep at the heart of, of everything here. And that's something that I found incredibly moving um, and, and coming in and working here. Um, so I think... Um, what's a good thing to talk about now is if I introduce you, um, you to uh, Terry, um, who Terry Fernie, who is our lead family um, therapist here at Castle Craig, also deals with a lot of patients with trauma. Um, Terry, I think it's probably great if you could give um, talk a bit about what you do and also give an example of how you maybe help a, a patient in particular a particular patient through the process okay. as they come here and then on to, to long-term um, okay. recovery. Not a problem. Hi, as Paul said, my name is Terry Fernie and I'm one of the lead therapists here at the castle. And I am the primary lead therapist for our family recovery workshop. Um, I helped put it together and it's something that has been ongoing throughout all of COVID. We used to do it live pre COVID, but now we do it via zoom. Um, and we were able to keep that going throughout the COVID period. Um, a family recovery workshop is an amazing part of our program because as Phil 
stated, it is a family systems illness and it impacts everyone in the family. During the family recovery workshop, what we do is we help family members start to realize how the addiction has impacted their lives and how they have gotten caught up in the disease of addiction and how it has caused them to change in response to their loved ones. Um, a lot of them are really surprised. They start the program looking for ways to help their loved ones or what they need to do for their loved one when their loved one comes home. And they kind of quickly sort of realize as I'm sort of like, welcome to the first day of your recovery, as they start to begin to be aware of how it's changed their behavior and how the disease of addiction has shaped them over the time that it's been affecting their family member. So we introduce them to all of the controlling and coercive behaviors that they're doing as well. Um, so that's how the family program works on that front. Um, in terms of trauma, um, a patient coming in with trauma, and it depends on, because we do get some referrals that come from like those of you who are therapists or referring agencies, that they're, the patient is already as identified as having trauma which is a little bit easier in that we know that we're looking for that trauma and we're mindful of those trauma reactions in advance. But it doesn't really change how we interact with the patient. It just kind of gives us a heads up on what to be aware of. Um, we are, as Phil said, moving towards being a trauma-informed facility, but we are a trauma-aware facility here at the castle already in that we have a lot of things innately built into our program to help trauma patients um, in terms of things like a reliable routine. We are aware and we keep our group sizes down to smaller numbers so that we're not doing any sensory overload kind of moments. Um, all of our staff are trauma trained and trauma informed. So they're aware of those kinds of little things, as Phil said, that can be triggers that are that to most people who don't have trauma can seem very mundane. <clears throat> The other part, excuse me, the other part that we have here is that we do have a trauma group. So a patient with identified trauma or that we identified during that assessment phase that Phil talked about with all the, the assessment forms and the biopsychosocial during that phase, if we identify trauma at that stage, then we will refer them to the trauma inform the trauma group, which gives them that all that biological and emotional information on where the trauma comes from and how it's manifesting for them and how to manage it, um, start teaching them grounding and containment skills and give them a good understanding of what's happening for them. Um, individual therapist, we can do specialized trauma treatment. We have CBT therapists who deal with trauma. We have EMDR here. And also one of my areas of passion is that like Peter Levine's work as far as connecting with your body and recognizing what your body is telling you about your emotions and your trauma. What builds into the trauma and helps us be a trauma-aware facility moving towards informed is, our, as Phil said, the DBT skills classes that we teach them. All of our patients get DBT skills classes. All of them start with learning those distress tolerance skills and starting to understand what they're feeling and learning to manage those big feelings that can often be overwhelming. Um, patients who stay longer for our advanced program move into an advanced trauma treatment group, which again gives them more grounding and containment skills and a better understanding of their trauma. Our advanced group can move into the ACOA, ACDF group, which is the adult children of alcoholics, addicts, or adult children of dysfunctional families group, which again gives them that understanding of the impact of their early development in their childhood. All of these things our foundation group gets some sense of and some information about, but again, our advanced group that stay more than the four to six weeks, it gets more in-depth and detailed information and skills in that area. Um, so trauma patient, identified or unidentified comes in, we get them into group, we can do a more detailed trauma assessment, myself or one of the other trauma-trained professionals here will do a more detailed assessment in determining if they need EMDR. But any patient who's receiving EMDR does need to be in treatment for a minimum of eight to 10 weeks because that we require time for them to settle into treatment 
and to make sure that they are able to do that type of processing before we begin the trauma EMDR treatment. If they're not suitable for EMDR when they come in, we will do that um, work with them in terms of building resources and helping them get skills to be able to ground themselves and contain themselves. Uh, there's a lot of psychoeducation work. Let me see if a question propped up. Clients, current addiction, initial steps. Um, definitely would recommend validation, um, psychoeducation on that and helping them understand the disease of addiction um, and getting them to that point where they understand that because acceptance is one of the things that makes treatment far more successful. Um, moving forward with the trauma part of it, also requires a degree of acceptance because they need to, what they're doing is they're dealing with their addiction and their trauma concurrently. So it's about realizing and connecting how the trauma is playing into their addiction as well. Does that make sense to everybody? Because one kind of feeds the other. Um, so it, again, is an integrated process, helping them realize how they've been using their addiction a lot of times to cope with their trauma and how their addiction can be re-traumatizing them at the same time. So getting a grip on that process and being able to help them stop that cycle and get the resources they need to be able to manage those feelings. And again, it is, as Phil said, all about connections and being able to connect to people honestly and authentically. Thank you, Terry. Um, so it's good. To, some questions coming through as well, and I've also already had a message from from one of you identifying that, that that you know you'd like to have a follow up conversation because there's only so much we're going to be able to cover today. Um, we welcome um, you know catching up with you all um, separately later. And um, one of the um, questions I've been asked is who's the best person to speak to, um, and and the answer to that is is Nick. Um, Nick Axel, who's here on this call, who's our partnership consultant um, for Castle Craig and Smallmore, and he um, basically helps um, basically helps people um, find a way to referring here and also referring patients outwards of our centres as well. Nick, do you want to just introduce yourself and talk a bit about what you do for us? Yeah, thanks, Paul, and uh, thanks to all my colleagues for coming on, and particular thanks to Pat, Laura, Holly. Uh, Kathleen and Bernie for, for taking the time to come on and, and show an interest in what we do. And um, it's just really interesting listening to, to Phil and Terry there, um, you know, talking about the, you know, how we work and, um, you know, my background and, you know, I have a lived experience of trauma and addiction. And I've worked for the Castle Craig uh, group uh, for the last uh, just under five years, um, with Smarmore and Castle Craig, um, my role is is really to develop and maintain um, mutually beneficial relationships with professionals, other organisations, and um, you know, kind of really work in collaboration and partnerships with 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 um, you know yourselves that are on here. Um, you know, like to be mentioned. You know, um, we we you know we have we have a real need for various reasons to partner with you know with therapists, organisations. Um, professionals, um, you know, you know, uh, the community, um, you know, where we're, you know, either not suitable, you know, someone isn't suitable for support with us, whether we need to support, um, support family members. So, you know, yourselves working alongside, you know, our, our, our patients, clients, family members, you know, for aftercare, um, you know, alongside us or whatever. So, so there's a real, you know, real, um, you know, real need to, to develop relationships. So, so as Paul said, I'll be available um, post this meeting. I'll be more than happy and really keen to have a Zoom with you all and and uh, hear more about what you do and um, you know work collaboratively. So, thank you. So, Nick, and um, thank you for that. And if you don't mind, just dropping your email in the the chat to everybody so they can catch up with you. Already have one person and sure. um, request that. Um, so yeah, feel free to get in touch with Nick. And and it's worth thinking um, about the funding as well, Nick. Do you just want to talk about the the funding providers that we work with, um, some of the the private insurers and also national health services as well. Yeah, sure, Paul. So so um, from you know we've got two two inpatient locations: Castle Craig Hospital in Scotland, uh, just outside of Edinburgh, and Smarmore Castle Clinic, uh, just on the Louth Meath border. Um, from a Smarmore Castle perspective, um, we we work with um, 
some of the main main Irish insurance companies and international expat insurances. Um, we're on the verge of having HSC beds imminently. Um, that's within the next couple of and, weeks, I understand. You know, yeah, so and also um, patients pay privately as, privately as well. We have a range of, of um, room options, um, single or shared shared room options at both locations. Uh, in Smarmore in Ireland, the multi-occupancy room um, for, for four weeks starts at just over uh, €17,920 for a four-week period. And then for Castle Craig uh, in Scotland, we work with most most um, most of the main insurance companies um, really throughout the world. Uh, we have con- uh, we've had, had a long term contract with the NHS, so we treat NHS patients, and also patients can pay privately. And um, the room rate in, in Scotland starts for a twin room starts at three thousand nine hundred pounds uh, per week. Um, but I'll put my details in the in the box there, and really really look to, look forward to connecting with you all. Uh, on a one-to-one uh, uh, time that suits you. So thank you. And I think one key thing we, we always want to push as well, we we basically, as, as I mentioned before, want to help patients. And, and that's one thing that I, I really, that really attracted me to come here is the, the family nature of this business and the fact that it was formed to help people. Um, it's not owned by a money-making company. It's um, owned by a family. And um, uh, very much it's about helping people and, helping NHS patients and, and HSC patients is, is a great thing to do. Basically, if you've got somebody who you think could do with help um, uh, and that we might be able to help, do get in touch um, and and we will help whoever we can. And we will also refer out elsewhere uh, if there's somebody who we can't help. Um, I think um, one question I wanted to go back to is Holly had, had mentioned in the, the chat about um, does somebody have to lead with addiction to be able to go to to either the castles here? And Terry's come back and said addiction does have to be a factor. Um, Terry, do you just want to expand on that further in terms of, say, what the lead is with trauma versus addiction and how that works with, with who we treat? OK, um, it is. A lot of times, it's not true for everyone, obviously, there are patients who have trauma without addiction issues, but for from the perspective of what we do here at Castle Craig and at Smarmore, we are addictions focused first. So trauma is treated concurrently as a comorbid issue because we are very holistic. So we do have to have an addictions diagnosis concurrently or comorb- comorbidly with the trauma diagnosis. Is that pretty much what you needed paul um i think it is i think it is yeah. phil you've put your hand up um what would you like to say it's very interesting most of our clients or all of our clients um who approach this man more castle they have all had an addiction issue and that's their first initial reason for approaching smarmore castle um, whether that be an addiction or uh, whether that be a dependency on um, pain medication. So that that's where I would say um, the, the difficulty in that would be we're not a predominant treatment centre for trauma, right? Um, but we are um, a dual diagnosis treatment centre. And there's not a lot of dual diagnosis treatment centers about, it, especially in Ireland, right? Um, it doesn't exist. So we, we, I think the the beauty that I've experienced um, for people who with trauma without an addiction usually comes from the family, um, where they've got major traumas. Um, and no particular addiction, and that's where the, the referral on to the Rise Foundation, to family counselling, um, to Francis Black and different things like that, and also about um, meetings like this, networking with other people. Um, if we get, we, our admission secretary is always saying, um, if we can't help you, we will try and find someone who can help you. Um, and I've heard her admission secretary, Marcella MacDonald, mentioning that in almost every phone call that she receives, 
If we can't help you, we'll find someone who can help you. And that's really, really important. Um, so uh, I hope that answers a little bit as well um, for the non-addiction. Um, thank you. Thank you, Phil. That's great. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you. Thanks for your time. And hopefully um, we can work together or you can recommend us to somebody else or whatever. It's all about making these connections um, and uh, helping each other and helping get the right um, treatment for the patients. Hopefully speak to you again soon. Um, thanks again.